Today, we're gonna to make a mead with three different types of honey. Let's get started. So the recipe we're creating today has the following three honeys in it. It has clover honey, it has blackberry blossom honey, and buckwheat honey. Now let me tell you, I'll tell you why I'm gonna use all three of them and how I'm gonna use them in a moment. My end goal is to create a more complex traditional mead. Of course, a traditional mead is just honey, water, and yeast, and most of the time you use one, comp or one uh, honey, maybe two. Um, using three is gonna create a very interesting product. Here's my recipe up here, and then I'll explain my ratios. So I am using two pounds of the blackberry honey, one pound of clover honey, half a pound of the buckwheat honey, and then the water up to a gallon. Well, actually, I'm gonna go over a gallon. I'll tell you why, tell you why in a moment. And the mangrove jack, or jack's mead yeast, the MO5, which is, again, a mead yeast. Now, um, the reason I'm doing that ratio that I just said, I want this to be a predominantly fruity-esque um, mead. The blackberry honey is gonna pull those flavors out uh, because it has been harvested from blackberries, so theoretically we should get more of those notes. Two pounds will help us provide that. One pound of clover is gonna give us um, what I think is gonna be end up being more of a um, floral, uh, feel, floral taste. And then the buckwheat is has a contrasting thing to that. It's dark, it has a um, more molassesy kind of grassy taste. It's gonna um, contrast to the brightness we get from the other ones. The combination of the three, it's gonna be really good. And I'm very excited for that. Let's go ahead and mix our ingredients. Everything has been sanitized with star sand. This is my bucket, all that. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna mix up all of my ingredients first. All right, we've mixed everything together. Our current gravity is 1.123. So just a little bit under the 1.124 mark from what I'm seeing. I made sure to mix it up well. Obviously, if you don't mix it up well, there's a chance that that gravity reading is not accurate. But with this being as high as it is, it feels pretty accurate. We used three and a half pounds of honey. Now, I'm gonna do a quick taste test of just the must because I wanna tell you kind of what I'm getting pre-fermentation. Ooh, okay, on the nose, just Aroma-wise, the buckwheat is very strong. I'm like picking up most of the notes from here, but it's not as apparent in the actual must. It's definitely there, you get the grassiness, um, and, but there's that, the fruitiness I like. Ooh, I'm excited for this. Okay, so now our next step. We're gonna take and put our yeast in. I am going to add three grams of this mangrove jack, some fun facts about the mangrove jack. It, uh, ha it can get up to 18%. It's like a champagne yeast, but it's specifically made for um, mead. And I could have rehydrated this, but I'm not going to. And even on the packet, it says sprinkle contents directly onto uh, must. So, you know, we're gonna go by the instructions. Let me go ahead and get uh, three grams of this yeast. Here's our yeast. We're gonna pitch it right on top. Like it says, we're also going to add some Fermate O because the yeast need nutrients to be able to ferment properly. They need nitrogen, they need some yeast holes, they need or autolyzed yeast really. So this is all of that. This is an organic version. So I need 1.5 teaspoons per um, gallon. What, per five gallons? Whoa, just kidding. That could have been bad. So I need, hold on, math. I have plenty, you can't give yeast too much nutrient. I'm gonna put in one teaspoon. Now let me mix this up again. All right, this is mixed up, has all of our ingredients. Let's put our airlock on. I'll write my information down. Let's let this thing go through the primary fermentation. We'll come back after that and see what it's like. So here we go. All right, it's been 39 days since we started this mead and I've been a little lazy. I do believe it was finished in air quotes, done fermenting before. We're currently at 1.010 and I don't see any, any activity. It's clearing up, so my thought is this is done, done as much as it's gonna be. So now, let's go ahead and do a quick taste test. All right, so here's a taste test. Of course, our ratios were two pounds of the blackberry honey, one pound of clover, half of a pound of buckwheat. Ooh, interesting, definitely still yeasty. It's got some heat too, as well. The mangrove jacks I used is normally a pretty 
clean fermenter. And uh, it's definitely intended to go high ABV. It can go up to 18%. I mean, that blackberry, the berry taste is definitely popping. I like that a lot. The, the problem with it right now is the, uh, the heat of it mixed in also with the slight yeastiness we still have. I mean, we were only 30, what, eight days old, I think. And uh, that's, that's not a lot of time. So it needs more time. It does show promise. The sweetness level is actually nice. I think we ended honestly at a perfect level of sweetness. Not too sweet, but also not super bone dry. And I'm a little surprised that that mangrove jack did not kick up to 18%. Um, I thought I remember putting nutrient in, but maybe I didn't. So who knows, that could have been my fault. But we landed perfectly. Let's go and rack this into a glass carboy that has of course been sanitized. All right, we've moved it into a new container. Got an airlock on it. Now it's time to let it set for a little bit. We'll come back in hopefully a couple weeks when this clears up some, the yeastiness level will hopefully drop and uh, everything will ho hopefully mellow a little better. So see ya in a few seconds. And we're back. One of the pros of making a lot of mead is that you forget about some. I forgot about this mead, to be completely honest. We started it three and a half months ago. My last taste test was uh, almost two months ago. Let's see what it's like with quite a bit of age. Oh man. First of all, it's cleared up quite a bit. There's a decent layer of sediment. I probably need to rack off of that sediment, maybe. Um, this thing is so nice. The mixture of honeys is really, uh, really incredible actually. I think that the, the buckwheat popping through in this like subtle way is really important. It's kept sweetness too. So it's not like, I'm not gonna have to back sweeten this thing, which is nice. Oh, fruitiness. There's bright floral notes from it. I am mega impressed by this one. Holy cow. And I, I kind of like that I don't have to back sweeten it all. It's just there. It's just how it's supposed to be. Okay. So, and I mean, the ABV on it, I got to double check. Like I said, it's been a long time. I mean, it's pretty hot. 1.010, or sorry, 1.123, starting gravity, 1.010 after the primary. It has a lot of perceived sweetness, which perceived sweetness, by the way, is the... Actual sweetness to me is like if your gravity ended at 1.030, there's like actual sweetness. You can have perceived sweetness from something that goes dry. For example, this is 1.010, still up there on that sweetness level, but it feels sweeter or is perceived as sweeter than you typically would get from that uh, gravity. I, I really like this. That, that blend of honeys is so nice. Okay, here's my next step. I actually think you know, I, I was trying to figure out what to do with it. I think that because of my current situation and needing carboys and the fact that this is pretty much ready to go, we're going to go ahead and bottle it. So let me go ahead and bottle it real fast. Okay, I've gone ahead and bottled it all. I've chosen to do uh, wine bottles for space for me. I can store these a little easier right now. Um, I have a temporary little label. Or te I say temporary. It's the permanent label. I normally do like an official label for these, but I've decided to just do a since this is a small batch, um, just do a little cheap label, handwritten label, I should say. So now, let me tell you this. The final gravity, speaking of perceived sweetness, is 1.002. So we've fermented even more. Our final ABV is somewhere in that realm of like 15.2 or 3%. And it still tastes sweet, even though it's pretty dry. That's perceived sweetness land. So this thing is so good. Um, does it have a, a large amount of tannic value, meaning that like clinging to your mouth, the, the wicking of moisture has a little bit of that, but it's what I like about this is it's juicy. It's got a very bright floral taste and fruity taste from the blackberry honey. It's got the buckwheat, which adds that extra darkness, molasses side. It's just super complex. The uh, doesn't feel like it has a lot of burn, which is interesting because again, it's like 15% ABV, so it's pretty hot. Anyways, this has been literally the easiest mead I think I've had to make. No back sweetening. The body on it's really nice. The sweetness level's great. I mean, it's it's great. I think you should maybe try to make this, or you could even try to mix some honeys that you have yourself. I'd be curious to see what combinations you can come up with. So leave a comment down below if you try this and you try some other various com various combinations. But this has been a three honey mead. You could do this with a million different combinations and I plan on doing it more with different combinations of honey. 
but this, these three turned out great. So thank you so much for watching. I will of course be back with more content. I hope you'll hit the like and subscribe and all that stuff for more videos. See you in the future. Cheers.